The Token Theater friends are sitting down with Alicia. <laughs> I did not know that we were the Token Theater friends. You guys are the Token Theater friends. Yes. Hi, I'm Deep. And I'm Jose. And we're your Token Theater friends. So why are we Token Theater friends, Deep? Well, because whenever I go to the theater, I, I notice that I'm usually the only person of color in the room. Me too! And then, I, and then I feel like in real life, I'm the only person I know who likes theater as much as I do. Oh my god, me too! <laughs> so, how the show is going to go is Jose and I have picked three different shows that are currently running at three different price points, and we're going to, we're going to talk about whether or not the show were, was worth our time and possibly your money. We're going to give you some knowledge that we wish we had when we were starting starting out on this beat. And then hopefully you can also wow your your non-theater loving friends with fun theater facts. We're gonna have some special guests on. It's not gonna be the two of us talking at you for 12 minutes, but I feel like I would watch it I watch I would watch the two of us talking at you. So today we're gonna be talking about three shows. We're gonna start with You Brought Her Heart Back in a Box. Currently running at theater for a new audience. Yeah. We're gonna continue with Miles for Mary, running at Playwrights Horizons, and we're gonna finish with Draw the Circle, currently running at Rattlestick Playwrights Theater. Uh, okay, so the first show we're going to be talking about is He Brought Her Heart Back in the Box by Adrian Kennedy, who is currently 86 years old. The highlight, it is 50 minutes long. <laughs> So you go in and you go out and you have time to do other things and afterwards, like do your laundry. It's set in 1940s in the South and it is a town that is very segregated and the white son of the town, of the town mayor falls in love with a half black girl. Is it a spoiler to say it does not end well? It's all about love and but also racial strife and also the generational trauma that comes from that racial strife and whether new generation can get, get past the sins of the people who came before them and whether or not healing is possible. What surprised me the most about this show was how much Adrian Kennedy gets across in 50 minutes. Yeah, right! Because the show is epic. Yes! And it is so short but I felt in a good way, that I had been there for a century. And, well, I think the only criticisms I have of the show is because it's 50 minutes and you have, and you get a lot of exposition and, and history that predates the show coming at you from the mouths of the two characters. Like, you don't feel like you know them enough. I, but I wanted to know more about them, and I feel like this is one of those times where I could have had more characters. Like it could have been longer. It could have been like a big epic between these these two families, like Romeo and Juliet. But it was just this beautiful little snow globe of a piece that was over before I really had a chance to fully digest it. So in the show, we meet several people who work at a high school who are working on a telethon called mm -hmm. Miles for Mary. So basically the play has several vignettes where we sit with the characters as they have staff meetings. And it's directed by Lila Neugebauer, who is the off-Broadway director of the moment. I think she's single-handedly like directing everything off-Broadway. She's doing The Wolves at Lincoln Center by Sarah DeLapp, which, is a, which was a Pulitzer finalist last year. And she also did and, and The Antipodes by Annie Baker and Everybody by Brandon Brand Jacob Jenkins. Like she is amazing. You should see everything she does because I haven't seen a bad show from her yet. She's incredible. Mm -hmm. And I love that Lila visited similar territory in the Antipodes, which is mm -hmm. also about a, a meeting. Yeah, it's about like one big writer's room. And so I feel like she's really good at directing people talking around a table and making it really entertaining. A lot of the humor in the play comes from it being set in the 80s. Yeah. Did, it, did it make you wonder, like, 20 years from now, you know, what are people going to be seeing on stage that they're going to find absolutely hilarious because it's going to look like, you know, like cavemen discovering fire. Mm -hmm. I love the parallel between, you know, the 80s were very much the age of Reagan 
and we are now in the age of I'm not gonna say his name, Blech. but it's the same. It's you know like ultra conservatives ruling America, mm -hmm. and I feel that in a way we see the effects of that. One of the characters gets really excited about a poster with a cat and like some like slogan. Yeah, those those horrible motivational posters. And it's said that kind of what memes on Facebook and Twitter are. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're motivational posters. Yeah, they are. They make us happy when we want to like set the world on fire because everything's going, you know, mm -hmm. to hell in a handbasket. Yeah. Well, don't be don't be negative. I won't be negative. I'm sorry. It's like happy theater. Happy theater. Happy, right? happy theater. Draw Circle is based on Dean's life um, and about his transitioning from a woman to a man and how the people in his life react to it. And the interesting thing is, like, he's he's telling the story as a one-person show, but he his character isn't on stage. It's all these people talking about this big event. Just usually, when we hear stories about trans people. They're told from different points of view, from different people, but it's rare that the people are written and portrayed by a trans person. Mm -hmm. So that in itself was so mind-blowing. It's so rare for a trans voice to be on stage and for, and for the stage to have an authentically trans experience on it. And so I wonder, because of the rarity of that, if having Dean not play himself was like detrimental to that authenticity. So yeah. even though I agree with what you're saying, that was kind of strange, but it was also so much of Dean in the play that that didn't bother me. In fact, that was what moved me the most because I can't imagine what it must be like for anyone to spend you know, so much part of their life wondering what other people think about them. My only uh, complaint about the show was that at the beginning, I felt that it took Dean a while to get into the skin of each of the characters. Mm -hmm. The, I feel like the mental, like the emotional energy it must take to know that this is what people think of you and to act that out. That must take a, a lot of therapy and a lot of like under, of understanding and forgiveness of people who, you know, his parents didn't talk to him for two years and didn't invite him to Thanksgiving and would hide him away from the rest of his family. Like to be able to forgive someone who disappointed you and hurt you that much, like that takes a lot. And now we're gonna talk about like which show was most worth our time and money. So, what would be your pick? Miles for Mary a thousand times. Well, I mean, you liked it enough to see it twice. I love which... Miles for Mary. And you would go to that staff meeting. In I real would, life. I would, I would. And I would ride the stationary bike. I would help set up the landlines. You, you would do the telethon. I would do all of it for Mary. I would go for Draw the Circle because, I mean, the price, the it's not very much, 15 to $40. And even though it's a one-person show, you get so many well-drawn-out characters from it. And you, get, and you just get to see a fantastic solo performance from an artist who I think is going to be really hot in, in the next couple years. We took a little field trip downtown to Soho Rep, where they're currently rehearsing for their newest play, Alicia Harris's Is God Is. is the play about? So Is God is, is a piece about two young women, twin sisters, who have been burned in a fire. They're, so it's about how these two sisters who grew up in the foster system um, and are from the South, living in the Northeast, um, get a letter one day unexpectedly from their mother and they're sort of sent on this um, epic quest that answers a lot of questions about their background. So how did you get into, become a playwright and get into the theater? Well, I have always had great interest in storytelling. I think that as I was growing in consciousness in undergrad and understood that people had a very sort of narrow idea about how black women specifically could exist on stage, I was really mm. frustrated by that. And that's what led me to writing. I, I was frustrated by what I feel are cultural pressures for black women 
that this idea that we are sort of invincible is dehumanizing mm -hmm. the strong black woman trope, yeah. but also that we gain our strength through endurance. I think that that's really frustrating and dehumanizing and sort mm -hmm. of sends a message that can be damaging, to the, that is damaging to the mental and spiritual health of black women. I really love how you mix so many genres in a play. Mm -hmm. I was reading it, it's such a page turner. Well, I have been interested in sort of inserting myself into genres where I didn't see myself forever. Mm -hmm. One of my prompts was like, if I were to write something that's like an ancient Greek tragedy, what would that feel like? What would it sound like? Who would populate that landscape? And so I just like went to town and did my thing. When was the first time you saw yourself on stage? Um, can I talk about the first time I read myself? Sure! I, the first time that I read myself was with Intozaki Shange's mm. For Colored Girls. I remember walking as an undergrad and reading it while I was walking and being like, this sounds like me. This sounds like I wrote it and it just felt like home. What do you think of theater critics now? I'm, I'm, you know, I have so many feelings. I think it's important to be critically engaged with work. Mm -hmm. I think that sometimes you know, in the ways that we expect a critic to be able to use the English language uh, well, we should expect them to have a level of cultural competency. Mm. And I'm frustrated. I was thinking, I was like, what if I only read reviews by black women of his goddess? Because my mm. context is a very black woman context. I wouldn't have nothing to read, you know what I mean? So that is a bit of a contention, you know what I mean? Who gets to talk about my work and tell everyone else about it? Yeah. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. So now it's time for our 11 o'clock number. And don't get too excited because we're not going to sing, at least not yet. Instead, we're going to talk about topics and themes and things in the news and in the theater sphere that are haunting our minds and our nightmares yeah. sometimes. Yeah, kind of, kind of like a, a, the refrain from Rosie's, R Rose's turn, which you can't get out of your head, you know? It's like this topic, we, we just can't stop think, thinking about it. So 11 o'clock number. So what, what are we talking about this week? Run times. And, and, and not the, you know. Not running. the Miles from uh, Mary. Uh, yeah, not Miles from Mary. No, actual run times. Where are they? Why can't we find them? I thought a show was going to be 90 minutes, and I scheduled 90 minutes on my calendar. I tried calling the box office. They didn't know. I called the theater company. They don't know what the runtime is. So wait for this. I go to the show, and you want to know how long it was? Wait for it. 190 minutes. What the? Yeah. If, if you like sneak a three hour show on someone, you know, you're not, you're not Tony Kushner. This isn't Angels in America. Like, we don't know if it's going to be, a, if we're going to have a good time or not. So that was a good theater shade. Yeah. See, we, we, to we told you we could be mean. Yes. And we were. I think we might be running low on time and attention span. So, wow. We survived our first episode. We survived our first episode. Yeah. Yeah. We really hope you enjoyed the show. You can find us on Twitter. At Token Tea Friends. And, and email all of your suggestions, questions, ideas for segments that you want us to do, shows you want us to see, criticisms, but please make it nice because we're nice people and we're just starting <laughs> to do this. So don't be the mean person who's we're like, we're the mean people. Yeah. yeah. The only people who, who can be mean is us. Just So email us your comments at tokentheaterfriends at gmail.com. So until next time, I'm Deep Tran. And I'm Jose Solis. Thank and you for watching. Do you need like a little snazzy closing? Yeah, we should say something to close. Friends out.